Welcome to Movie Recall. In today's video, we will be going through the 2016 movie Central Intelligence. It's time to recall. Let's get started. Turn on subtitles and spoilers ahead. The film opens in a high school when Robbie is seen showering in the boys' locker area. A gang of thugs grabbed him in the middle of his shower. Calvin is being hailed by the entire school in the gym since they all know that this is their last assembly, but this time in the limelight is stolen by the bully, who is raining nude Robbie into the gymnasium in front of everyone. Calvin and Maggie, his girlfriend, are the only ones who do not laugh. Calvin hands Robbie his jacket so he may hide when he flees. Calvin, the most likely to succeed, isn't faring any better in life 20 years later. Calvin has come to a halt. He is a low-level accountant who despises his work. He is having lunch with Maggie, his high school girlfriend and now wife. Calvin suffers while co-workers at another table celebrate his past help advancement. Maggie attempts to divert the issue by presenting photographs of the dress she intends to wear at their 20-year reunion, but Calvin reveals he does not want to go. Maggie takes offense to the thought that his life is so bad, and the two dispute for a while. Calvin returns to work and logs onto Facebook after viewing the reunion gathering. Bob Stone sends him a buddy request. He is perplexed, but confirms it nonetheless, and his phone rings. He's startled, but responds after realizing it's Maggie. He apologizes, and she advises that they seek counseling. He claims they don't need it, and while she explains why she thinks it's a good idea, he begins receiving texts from Bob Stone. He claims to be in town for the reunion and wishes to meet Calvin. While Maggie agrees to counseling, he asks Bob who he is. Bob Stone confesses that it's Robbie from high school, and he's surprised when he offers. They go out later that night. Calvin informs Maggie that he has intentions. He tells her it's with Bob Stone, but she believes it's a phony name, so he reveals it's Robbie. It seems like a made-up name, and it takes her a second to comprehend who he's referring to, but once she does, she says all right to his going out, and she'll reschedule. Calvin walks into a pub and is approached by an extremely fit man he doesn't know. The dude introduces himself as Bob Stone, alias Robbie. Calvin is taken aback to see him. Calvin is thrown off by Bob's off-kilter demeanor as the two catch up. The two discuss employment, and Bob admits that before being dismissed, he worked as a federal contractor. Bob leaves to go fetch the shots after convincing Calvin to let him. When a man attempts to steal his seat, Calvin initially sticks up for himself before recognizing it's a poor idea. When Bob returns, he beats the man to death and the two flee. So the two go back to their old high school, where Bob relives his horrific experiences and Calvin laments his present failing to measure up to his past. Bob urges Calvin to execute his legendary backflip to pump him up, but everything goes horribly wrong. I'm not going to stop until you accomplish the golden jet flip, he says. The two return to Calvin's house, where Bob asks for his assistance in resolving a parole issue. Calvin accepts, but is unaware of what Bob means. Instead, he examines the account and discovers millions of monies in offshore accounts all around the world. When Bob's computer begins to flip out, he knocks a beer bottle on it, short-circuiting the equipment. He then asks Calvin if he may stay the night, to which Calvin accepts. Calvin enters a club that appears to have been bombed. He hears pounding on the door and goes to check who it is, and it's the CIA. Calvin claims he's had communication with Bob and that he's on the couch. They enter to discover a spotless living room, but no Bob. Calvin inquires as to what is going on and is informed that Bob is sought for murder and treason and that he currently possesses state secrets that he plans to sell to our enemies. They inform him that they need to know all he knows about Agent Stone, and the word agent throws him off. He attempts to convince them that he doesn't even know Bob. It is revealed to him that Bob has him listed as every emergency contact on all his documents. Calvin believes that the stranger from high school has entrapped him in something dangerous. He attempts to explain himself, but Agent Harris interprets his nervousness as evidence that he's hiding something. She asks him to demonstrate that he is not associated with Bob Stone, and he replies that he'll need a minute. Everyone in Calvin's office goes over everything. Maggie dials Agent Harris, who answers the phone. While Calvin speaks with her, Maggie confirms the appointment with her therapist, and he swiftly hangs up. Maggie is unsatisfied and wants a kid, according to Agent Harris, who has been trained to discern speech patterns. Calvin is having a busy day. The second phone comes in from Bob, who claims he's in trouble and he's in the stairs, so Agent Harris and her team go after him and advise Calvin to hide in his office. When Bob arrives, he wonders what the hell is going on, acting as though they intended to have the CIA leave the office. Calvin continues to try to extract answers from Bob, but when he doesn't receive any, he removes Calvin's tie. He asks Bob what's going on, and after calling an Uber, and instead of a response, he's asked if he's in or out. Calvin says he's leaving, but Bob replies to it, it doesn't matter because he's already in. Bob stands atop the desk and ties the sprinkler. 
Calvin reiterates that he's out, and Bob replies all right before lighting the fire to the tie and declaring that the only way out is to go in first. When he tries to hand up Calvin's pistol, he flees and yells that Bob is nearby. Everyone in the workplace is now staring at Calvin as Bob tackles him to the ground. Bob claims Calvin is a captive as agents enter the room. Bob begins to discharge his gun, igniting a conflict in the office between the agents and Bob. Calvin tries to flee but gets caught in a postal carriage. Bob easily defeats all the agents except when the one has the upper hand and puts a chain around his neck. He calls Calvin for aid, who has just picked up a gun, but then he gets into a battle with an agent and accidentally discharges the weapon at the person strangling Bob, freeing him. When the agent tries to arrest Calvin, Bob knocks him unconscious, places Calvin in the postal cart, and runs towards the exit. A group of agents, including Agent Harris, greet him. Calvin attempts to save himself for a bit while she tells him to turn himself in, and eventually Bob organizes an escape. When the sprinklers go off, he tosses a flash bomb and runs through the window with Calvin, landing on the gorilla. Calvin has no choice but to board the Uber since they are also firing at him. They flee and Bob says that he is a state advisory who stole encryption keys for the whole US spyware system, which he plans to sell to a buyer if successful, the United States is unable to prevent assaults. He informs Calvin that he requires his assistance in solving the final piece of the jigsaw, determining where the trade will take place. Calvin doesn't care, he just wants to get away. He orders Bob to turn off the automobile, but Bob does so in order to get off the grid. Calvin attempts to prepare for a sensible dialogue with Bob, telling him he wants to go home, but Bob reminds him that since he's wanted, they need to clear their reputations. Calvin, frustrated, tells him that he was told Bob stole the codes, but Bob denies it. Instead, he's told Harris is trying to frame him for his partner's death. He explains that him and his partner Phil were on a mission together tracking Maggie, this supposed black badger, to a penthouse apartment. They parted ways and the elevator exploded, killing him. He tried to save Phil, but he couldn't. The two are attacked by a guy on a motorbike who hits Bob with the bike's tire to the face. He's thrown off his bike when Bob throws a metal pipe into the wheels and Calvin decides the bike's a great escape for him. He flees, leaving Bob to battle alone and calls for help. Maggie informs him that they may meet in the therapist's office rather than their home. He's trying to appear cool, but she can sense that he's acting strangely, so Harris greets him at the therapist. She forces him into the van. Harris informs him that she believes he is innocent. She asks him if he knows what happened to Bob's companion, and he claims the Black Badger murdered him, but he is informed that Bob is the Black Badger. She retracts the narrative, but in this version, Bob gladly betrays his partner. She continues to inform him that the only way Bob can sell the codes is with Calvin's cooperation, and because he's the only one Bob trusts, they're sending Calvin into the field for these reasons. Harris hands him a gadget with a button to press that alerts them to Bob's presence. So now that Calvin is frightened to watch Bob playing doctor, he attempts to leave the therapy session. But Maggie forces him to stay, and he knows he can't tell her why he wants to go, so he stays. The therapy session rapidly becomes bizarre, but Maggie accepts it as a realistic session that the two badly needed. When Calvin has had enough, Maggie believes he does not want to fight to salvage their marriage. She claims she had nothing to do with anything, then walks away. Bob promises to forgive him after they restore the planet, but Calvin threatens him with a button. Bob eventually persuades Calvin to assist him, stating that he is on the right side of this battle. So Calvin goes to Trevor, Bob's high school bully, the only guy who can assist him in obtaining the transaction number. Bob isn't trying too hard to keep his cool at the workplace, but it's evident that Trevor still has influence over him. Meanwhile, Trevor behaves pleasant even though he's probably not such a stand-up guy. Trevor tries to talk to Bob, but Bob can't even say anything before giving him the numbers. Before apologizing to Bob, he begins informing him that he has discovered God. Then his true colors show, and he tells him that he doesn't care what he's done, in fact he's proud of it. He begins berating Bob, and while Calvin believes Bob is capable of handling him, Bob shuts down and flees. Calvin tells Trevor he's an asshole, and hands him the transaction number as he walks away. Harris calls Calvin and threatens him, saying that they're preparing to charge Maggie with conspiracy. They order him to take Bob outside and prepare for their arrival. Outside, Bob apologizes for what occurred, saying that he was the only one who had ever been polite to him before informing him that he doesn't have many friends. He vows never to betray Calvin because he is his only friend, but Calvin then throws a bombshell by apologizing and confessing that he told Harris where they were. The CIA arrives and kidnaps Bob and Calvin. Calvin is now regretful. Harris seeks to gain answers from Bob at an unidentified location. 
Calvin hears him being tortured and decides enough is enough, knocking out an agent, taking the pistol and pulling it on the others, demanding a key card, tying him up and going to rescue Bob. When he enters the room, Bob quickly lights up before handcuffing Harris. She tells Calvin that he's making a mistake, but he only argues if he's wrong. On the outside, Calvin must deal with Bob, who isn't freeing himself and claims he isn't a spy, just Robbie the tool. Calvin informs him that he is not, that he is Bob Stone, but Bob just informs him that the name means nothing because it is made up. Calvin informs him that he obtained the nickname Golden Jet after urinating his trousers while jogging and that he has made the term his own in a good way. He persuades Bob and they're ready to shake hands when Calvin notices Bob's fractured finger. The two make a daring escape. Calvin gets carried away when beating up several agents, forgetting he's committed a crime. Calvin tries to use the key card he stole as they prepare to go, but it doesn't work. Bob saves the day by ramming the agent against the door while holding a pistol to his head. They now flee and steal a vehicle. Now Bob hands Calvin a phone in the car and instructs them to enter the codes into a map to determine where they should travel. Because they're in Boston, they will require an aircraft. They arrive at the airport where Bob informs them that they must steal a plane. Bob practically pulls the plane from a hangar as Calvin distracts the security guy, allowing the two to fly to Boston. Calvin believes Harris is the Black Badger while flying. They arrive at their location, but Calvin believes it is very exposed. He notices a parking garage and informs Bob that something is going on underneath him. Calvin rejects Bob's suggestion to separate up. He instructs him to call him if anything goes wrong. So Bob goes to the parking lot, and it's almost as if they were expecting him. Calvin notices Harris pulling up and pursues her. He flees, and Bob kills him just as he is about to hand over the package to the buyer. Phil appears out of nowhere and shows himself to be the Black Badger. Calvin arrives and sees Bob barely nicked his neck. He hears Bob confess he's the Black Badger, but then he hears Phil claim he's the Black Badger. Harris cuts them off and begins firing. Calvin notices the drives on the ground while everyone is firing. He hurries out and takes them against his better judgment. Calvin is almost shot but escapes away. He is pursued by the buyer and is about to be struck by a car when Bob saves him again. Calvin continues to run as Bob approaches him on the bridge. Then Phil reappears from nowhere and the two try to persuade Calvin that they are innocent. They then begin firing at each other. Calvin shoots Bob and urges Phil not to move before revealing his ammo has run out. He fires the rifle towards Phil but he catches it and reloads it. He informs Calvin that it can't be Bob since he's too frail. We discover the truth about what occurred the night he pretended to die. Phil disliked Bob. Calvin is commanded to kneel, but instead tries his golden jet flip again, which he fails at, but serves as a distraction. Bob appears from behind Phil and pulls out his trachea before pushing him into the river. As they leave, Bob tells Calvin that he's ideal for the CIA before telling him that they need to hurry and deliver Harris the codes so they can go to the reunion on time. Harris expresses gratitude toward them for their service to their country. She advises Calvin that if he wants to change careers, he should contact her. Maggie approaches Calvin and inquires as to what is going on. Bob greets Maggie and asks why the therapist has come to see her. He identifies himself and tells Maggie the truth about the CIA assignment. Calvin tells her that he is satisfied with his life because of her and doesn't care about the rest, so they kiss. Inside, Bob wants to go, but Calvin persuades him to stay. The reunion homecoming king and queen are revealed, and Bob is perplexed as he approaches to the stage. Trevor chooses to insult him in front of everyone once more. Bob apologizes this time. Trevor shoves Bob, who then strikes him in the face. Bob goes up and delivers an impassioned speech, thanking Calvin before stripping nude in front of everyone. Nobody seems to mind, and everyone cheers him on. Then Bob's high school crush Darla greets him, and the two heavily flirt until Bob kisses her. The strangest high school reunion ever begins, and Bob remains nude the entire time. Maggie's pregnant, Bob is waiting outside for Calvin who is beginning at the CIA. He offers Calvin his old high school blazer as a present. The film concludes with the two driving out into the sunset. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and click the bell icon to get new movie recaps.